Everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's Monday, Mishmash Monday. Hope you had a great weekend. Uh, what a great weekend I had. It's just, uh, you know, um, I felt like getting down the shop and creating something today. So uh, let's get right to it because I think you'll enjoy it. So let's I'm go. on my walk the other night and I'm going, um, you know, about five blocks from my house. And I look and next to a tree, I see two hammers. I know what you're thinking. You're saying, that's not a hammer. It's a railroad spike. But, uh, you know, it all it, it's perception. It's a beautiful hammer, isn't it? Well, it will be. So I said, look at this. Straight, nice shape. And a little bit of rust on it. Let's make this into a hammer. Uh, this should be a lot of fun. I always, I love making tools. And uh, to do it, I figured out a way a long time ago to make quick, lightweight hammers. Super simple. Let me now, show you. The first you thing you're going to need is a good handle. Now, you, I like acetate handles. That's uh, just something I like. So, you could take any old screwdriver that you might have that might have a broken tip or something. You could heat up the shaft with a propane torch, and this will pull right out. It'll melt it and pull right out. And then you could drill it out to the proper size. So, you could do that with any kind of handle you have. For me, however, a good friend of the show by the name of John. Oxaurus. He's from Taz, Australia. He sent me this a couple years ago. His father collected a whole bunch of handles, you know, and, uh, you know, so this is a tribute to his dad because uh, I'm sure him and I would have gotten along great. I love all kinds of handles. This one here is an old, like, chisel handle or something, or more or less a blank before they put it in. So we'll, what we'll do is we'll take this handle, we'll clean it up and everything, but this is the one we're going to use for the ha hammer. It's not quite round, so it'll stay on one side. Uh, now we need an interface between the hammer head and the handle. I, f I figured this out a while ago. Now, if you too. go to a Home Depot or any of the big box stores, they sell this half inch by 1 16th uh, wall thickness by 36 inch steel tubing. This one you can see is rusted already. It's all right. We're going to polish all that out. But it's nice steel tubing. And the beauty of that is a 3 8 by 16 all thread or threaded rod fits very snugly into that tube and that's all you're going to need for the hand it's very strong uh let's get right to it first thing we're going to do is we're going to clean up this spike try and keep it square because that's going to make a a difference when you're trying to get that center mark to uh to drill your hole but we're going to keep these square we're, i'm going to use the grinded disc because to get through the scale and then i'll finish up with the flap disc do that real quick Now that was just done to save some of the flap disc. Um, <clears throat> you can see here we did that with just the grinder disc. Now we're going to turn to the 40 grit. I like the benchmark abrasives. They have a you know a nice. This look how thick that is. This is 40 grit. This will clean that up. One, two, three. Let's do that. Okay, we have about an hour into this, and uh, what we did was just using the flap discs, working our way down a little bit to a worn disc. You see what we have now. Remember, I was telling you about the edges. Every time you take a little bit off here and here, you're going to have a sharp edge. That'll all be removed. Trying to keep the head, flattened out the head to where we want, because it is going to be a hammer, and these do come rounded. But you got to keep dunking this in water. You don't want to change the temper. These are tempered good for a hammer face. So... Now what we want to do, we're going to shorten it because obviously balance wise it's a little long. So we're going to cut it to about here. we got to figure what we want to do on the end. Do we want to make it a tip like this? Do we want a tip going up, tip going down? You know, we can do whatever. We, we can make it like a miniature claw hammer. It's a hundred things we could do. You know, it's all up to you now. But we're definitely going to take off about that much and uh, we'll cut that off now. Now to get the proper balance on where you're going to drill the hole for the handle, what I do is I take a blade, put it into the vise here, and balance this until you get the proper, when you get where it's just at that point where it's balanced on here, that's where you know to put the hole for the handle, okay? So it's going to be right about 
just a little bit back further but you'll see right about there is going to be where we're going to put the hole for the for the handle that'll give good balance to the handle. once you have your uh, balance point you mark it with a black marker take your calibers get the approximate center not you don't have to be too close scribe it this way like this turn it around scribe it like this it leaves two marks and you're going to put your punch right between those two marks and that'll be the center okay we're coming along nicely we uh drill we tap this out we counterboard it we tap this out, <clears throat> drilled it and tapped it for 3 8 16, screwed that all the way in. It comes all the way down to here. Now you just have to decide what length you want your hammer. You know, this, this is what's great about customizing. Now, this is one of my early customizations. I love this length. It's just perfect. So I'll do it right about here. We'll cut that off. We'll pop, we'll finish on this and then we'll put the tube. You got to cut the tube. Put it over and then we'll JB weld everything and let's see what we get. Okay, while the uh, paint dries, we had to come up here in the attic and do a couple things, especially work on a wrench we did last week. I'll tell you about that in a minute, but uh, some of you haven't been up here. It's uh, my attic and it's... It's uh, it's where I keep most of my hobbies. As you can see here, we got a load of all different hobbies. Everything we're doing. We're going to be doing some engraving now. And uh, there's my little night watchman. All kinds of cool stuff up here that you'll never see anywhere else. See that plane? I found that plane. <laughs> yeah, all kinds of cool stuff. We could talk about stuff up here for hours. But let me uh, let me get the engraving machine and we'll get started. Now you remember the British wrench we did last week. Well, some people were uh, saying that they would like to see the engraved numbers, the B308, put back onto the wrench. And I said, okay, let's do that. Okay, now it had B308. I don't know what those numbers were, but you can see here we transferred it into the lettering here, B308. Let me show you what it looks okay, like. Okay, there we go. I don't know if that was some kind of code or anything, but now B308 is back on the wrench. British made, and that one's in the bucket. Okay, we're all finished up here, but now that I'm up here, I always like to do a little bit of show and tell, something unusual. You know, as a kid, I always liked those old stop signs. You ever see the old stop signs, the ones that had the, the jewels in the letters? You'll know what I'm talking about. I, I couldn't find one that I can afford. They're big money, so I, I made my own. Check this out. So there it is. Uh, what I did, I found an antique stop sign, and then I got the, uh, the cat's eyes. That's what they're called, these reflectors. And I put them on the letters just like they did years ago. So how cool is that? I always wanted one of those. And uh, some of them were yellow with the red cat's eyes. I'm always keeping an eye out for them. That's pretty cool, huh? Here's something else that's uh, pretty cool. You ever seen one of these before? Watch this. <laughs> you think that's been uh, untouched for a while? Let me show you what okay, this like is. Like I said, this one hasn't been opened in a while. When was the last time you seen a pair of these, huh? With the uh, clay composite wheels. And uh, boy, I... Uh, Kids used to die and always want one of these. And they came in such a nice wooden box, you know. But, uh, and then rollerblades came out in the 80s. Remember rollerblades? Yeah, back in the 80s, rollerblades were everywhere. It was just uh, really popular for a short time. Now, you know my favorite part. Remember what our hammer looked like before we started? And we're calling this project done. Uh, you know something, with all the, the restorations and everything I do and... My favorite is the things that I make, you know, I would give away the restorations, you know, you just clean up a tool, but when you make something from scratch or something, I really enjoy these. And you can see what we did here, put some red where it's supposed to be, you know, in those uh, imprints. And again, it won't come off because your hand never touches the paint. It's recessed. Um, did a little engraving here, made in the USA over here, over here, scout crafter on the back here. Same thing on this side. Did a little bit smaller font just to see what I like. And I do like the smaller one here. And again, uh, made in the USA on this side too. So uh, what a lovely, this is just a nicely balanced little hammer and uh, came out real good. You know, um, you could do your end any way you want. You can even put a claw in there if you wanted to. But 
Uh, this is made for, uh, I, I do a lot of, you know, light do leather work, things like that. This is a perfect hammer for so many things because it's got that wide face. And let me show you what, what I, you can use. Now, like every other hammer, this will drive nails of all different types and sizes. And, you know, it has a nice, again, a nice face to it. So you can uh, get to whatever you want to. Just pulling the nails, you won't be able to get to. But what this is basically, what I like to use this for is for uh, any kind of like, you, you had to flatten out a piece when you fold a piece of metal or something like that and you need to get that sharp edge. This flat edge is perfect for getting that flattened down like that and you can see what it does or any kind of tapping like that. If you wanted to fold it over again, get that flat edge for some reason or another does a perfect job for that also you got this end here which can use for uh for maintaining or or shrinking metal or things like that or putting dimples in metal and uh texturizing it i mean there's a lot you could do with a hammer that you make Couple things i want to point out about when you want to build a hammer like this um first of all you fill that pocket before you thread in that rod with jb weld then you screw everything together and you fill in this inside with JB Weld too. And this gets threaded all the way down to here. And then when you squeeze this together and you turn it, the outside squeezes against the inside rod. And it makes it for an extremely strong uh, and lightweight, but yet very strong um, uh, shaft between the head and the handle. And then uh, finally, I pinned it. And you can see that I put a pin in there just so to make sure that it can't twist or anything. And this is as solid, I mean, for a hammer this size, it's as solid as it's going to get. Unless you welded it and made it a one-piece hammer. It's a, it's a great design. I've been using it for a long time. Really works well. So in closing, that was a fun project. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. A great start to the new week. Hope you have a great day. Enjoy it. Take care now. Bye-bye.